Hello and salut! It is May 2020, we're beginning to come out of lockdown in Paris, and this is a lamppost. Or at least, to you and me it's a lamppost. But to one French inventor in the 1880s, it was the transport of the future. This is the story of Edouard Mazet and his incredible plan for a floating aerial lamppost boat bus metro train tramway system thing. How am I supposed to write a title for that? I've come to the Place de l'Opéra in central Paris, which is the place where the opera is, and it's also the place where Monsieur Mazet wanted to put his lamppost boats. But to understand more about that, let's go right back to 1873. It is 10 years since London opened its Metropolitan Railway, and Paris still doesn't have one yet. Everyone agrees that they need one, but if there's one thing the French hate, it's a lack of debate. So they spend the next decade arguing how it should be done. Underground or overground? Steam trains or electric? A government commission set up specially to make a final decision on the issue looks at seven different proposals and finally decides that it doesn't like any of them. The simplest solution would be to copy London by going underground, but there's strong public opposition to that. The architect, Louis Eze, argued, Ne nous imposez pas le pas. Okay, basically what he's saying is, you can't make us go underground, we've got standards. And then he put forward his own plan for an aerial railway that would cut through the city above new pedestrian streets. But that meant demolishing every building in its path, and people liked that idea even less. Is he still going on about it? In 1881, the engineer Jean Chrétien drew up his proposal for a network of aerial railways. It ran along existing boulevards, featured clean electric trains, and to be honest, it might have worked until Parisians saw what he wanted to do to the Place de l'Opéra. Chrétien thought they were overreacting and argued Nil n'ignore, en effet, qu'un excellent moyen de faire Basically, what he's saying is, what's the problem? If anything, I've improved it. But it's fair to say that the press and the general public didn't quite agree with him. They thought defacing a national monument by putting a railway viaduct in front of it was absolutely scandalous, and Chrétien's project quickly ground to a halt. Is he still going on about it? So the citizens of Paris wanted a metropolitan railway. But they didn't want an underground railway, and they didn't want an aerial railway, and they probably didn't want to demolish half the city to build a surface railway. So what did they want? Well, it turns out there was an obvious solution that everyone had missed. Step forward our hero, Edouard Mazet. We don't know a lot about Mazet, but he was a captain in the Navy, and his solution was boats. Floating in the air above the streets, gliding gracefully from one lamppost to the next. You know, floating lamppost boats. In October 1884, Mazet published his proposal under the ambitious title New Metropolitan Railway, without rails, nor wagons, nor bridges, nor tunnels. So it was a railway in the same way that I'm a packet of biscuits. Each boat was double-decked and was long enough to be supported constantly by at least two posts. It would be propelled by motorised rollers. Mazzi's illustration shows a motor on board the vehicle, but he suggested that alternatively, the rollers could be fitted to the posts instead. The posts themselves would also be fitted with gas lamps and could house kiosks at street level, so they would fit right in with the existing Parisian streetscape. It was, in many ways, a brilliant idea. There were a few problems, though. The illustrations only show vehicles and posts going in straight lines. It's unclear exactly how the system would turn corners or go uphill and Monsieur Mazir was a little hazy about how exactly it would be powered. But I guess someone else could figure out those little details. Unfortunately though, in the end, no one could. Mazet's system was never built, and after only two more decades of rejected plans and ideas, including a Wuppertal-style suspended railway and a Lartigue-style monorail, Paris did what it probably should have done all along, and copied London. Which is why in 1900, Paris finally opened an underground railway and called it Le Métropolitain. If you'd like to ride on the famous floating lamppost boats of Paris, unfortunately they don't exist and never have done. But next time you're here, why not look up and take a moment to imagine what it could have looked like if Edouard Mazet's dream had become reality? 
A big thank you to Caroline Grubbs of SMU for helping me research this story. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon.